Well, hello, Mr. Ippolito's history student. This is Mr. Ippolito, and I want to take a couple minutes to talk to you about the All About Me One Slide presentation. One of the things that we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to be practicing our speaking and listening skills. And so we're going to be doing that very soon when we present our one slide presentation. So the one slide presentation is another way that I can get to know you and you can get to know each other in the class. So we're helping to build community and also uh, helping with our, like I said, our speaking and listening skills, our storytelling skills. Uh, and so this will be an opportunity for you to speak in front of the class, but it'll only be for 60 seconds and it's only one slide. So let me go ahead and explain uh, the directions to you. First of all, we will all create an all about me one slide presentation. I have done that as well. I'm going to show you an example in just a moment. This will be presented on either Thursday, August 17th. That's for uh, my A-Day class and uh, Friday, August 18th for my B-Day classes. Now, it should be no more than one slide. Students all the time uh, will try to, for the, the years that I've been doing this, have tried to sneak in two or three slides. We're just going to do this all on one slide to make it simple because we want these presentations to go quickly. We're going to begin them on one day, and then we're going to finish them on the next block day, and we're going to get through the entire class. So in order for us to do that successfully, we want to keep these to just one slide. Now, you can create the slide using Google Slides or Canva. The example that I'm going to show is in Canva, uh, but you can just as easily do it in Google Slides. Uh, and I provided a link below for you to get Canva for education. Now, some students, I understand, uh, other teachers have encouraged you in the past to use Canva to go on and get the free version of Canva. But I'm telling you that I'm going to get you the pro version where you get all the features and all the fonts and all the images at no cost to you through Canva for education, but you just need to click on that link below. So if you would like to start exploring Canva, because not only is, it, is Canva going to be great for this class, but Canva you can use for all of your classes. You can use it for English, for science, for math, for your elective. Uh, Canva is so valuable. And if you get a Canva for Education account using your Heart District login, your Heart District email address, then you will be able to use Canva until you are a senior in high school, until you are no longer a student of the Heart District. Uh, and I've even, literally, I have had students years later email me from high school saying, Mr. Apolito, thank you so much for Canva. Canva is amazing. And it is amazing. So I'm going to show you an example from Canva in just a moment. So uh, the first thing you're going to have in your slide is your first and last name, big and bold. I will show you the example on my slide. You must have at least one photo that includes you. All 10 of the photos could include you or some of the photos, but at least one of the photo needs to include a picture of yourself. Now, that can be you by yourself, or it can include you with friends or you with family. Again, I will show you an example on my slide. You must then include at least six additional images that represent who you are as a person. Your interests, these could include things like the people who are important to you, friends or family, the elementary school that you went to, the type of music and or artists that you like, favorite foods, activities you enjoy, your future college or career, hobbies or a quote that you live by. And then finally, at least three images. So you're seeing one plus six plus three. That's a total of 10, 10 images altogether uh, that are going to be on your slide, right? So include at least three images of your America. This is American history, U.S. history and government. And so I would like for you to depict what you think your America is. Now, your America could be your neighborhood. It could be photos of the, you know, the street that you live on. It could be a favorite park that you like to go to or a place you like to skateboard, or it could be your dance studio, or it could be your school that you attend, Rio Norte Junior High School. Uh, it could be it could be anything that you represent as your America, maybe places within the United States that you've traveled to, or maybe a place that you and your family like to vacation to, as long as it is part of the United States. Uh, so we, we're not taking, uh, we're not including photos of Paris. We're not including photos of Rome or Tahiti, right? Those aren't part of the United States. But if you and your family like to visit Hawaii, for example, that's part of the United States, or Zion National Park in Utah, that's part of the United States, or the Everglades in Florida, that's part of the United States, right? Walt Disney World. Uh, the Grand Teton Mountains, uh, the, the Rocky Mountains, uh, Oregon, uh, New Hampshire, wherever you love within the United States, that can also be included in my America, your America, right? So what does America mean to you? Where in America have you visited or what are some of your, some of your favorite places in America? It could even be right here at home. So again, one photo that includes you, six images that represent who you are as a person and your interests, and at least three images of your America. Now, these you could all blend together, right? Like, one image could include you in a favorite part of America that represents who you are as a person. But the bottom line is you need to have a total of at least 
10 images, and I'm going to recommend not too many more than 10 because you don't want to fill up the slide so much that the pictures are really tiny. So I'm going to recommend 10. The example I'm going to show you, I actually included a little bit more than 10, but I included some small images. I'll show you that in just a moment. When it is time to present, you will, from your desk, you don't need to, I know I told my period two class, you got to go up in front of the class, or um, you can actually present right from your desk. You're going to talk about yourself with your slide on the screen. I will load up the slide for you because you're going to, uh, you're going to upload this to Google Classroom. I'll show you at a later class how to do that. So you're going to talk about yourself with your slide on the screen for about 60 seconds. It could be a little bit more. It might be a little bit over, and that's fine too. But for about 60 seconds, you're going to talk about the images that you chose and talk about yourself for about one minute, 60 seconds. Um, you may be given feedback on slide appearance and presentation. So I may say, oh my gosh, that is such a beautiful slide. You use beautiful colors, or you use some great images, or I love the way that you arrange the pictures on your slide. I also might give you some feedback like, hey, that was kind of a plain background, or you use the default font, right? In uh, Google Slides, I think the default font is Arial. And in uh, Canva, it's like Canva Sans or something like that. So you want to try to choose a font that is different from the default, right? The, the font that just that you start off with whenever you're creating a slide. Uh, so try to go beyond the default, right? D d do something, make it look visually interesting. Uh, so I, like I said, I may be giving you feedback on slide appearance and presentation, but... I'm not going to grade you on that. I'm going to grade you on, did you follow these instructions here? That's what you'll be graded on. Um, you may also be given feedback on your public speaking. If you're really quiet and it's really difficult to hear you, then I may say, you know what? For the future, you might want to consider speaking up. I'm also going to offer you a microphone. So if you would like, I speak every day as a teacher. I put a microphone around my neck. You may have seen that microphone. I love the microphone. I'm loud enough, but... I like that microphone because it helps me to save my voice during the day. So I'm going to offer you a microphone as well if you would like uh, the opportunity to use that microphone. That is your choice. It's going to be up to you. Uh, the ideal format for your slide is 16 by 9. 16 by 9 is the default. It is the standard, which is good because it fills up the screen, right? It fills up a computer screen. It also fills up my projection screen. So 16 by 9 orientation. Uh, if you don't know what that looks like here, I'll just quickly show you in Canva. So I'm not trying to turn this into a full Canva lesson, but I will show you what that looks like. So when you go to create a design, you click here up in the top after you've created your account and you simply choose presentation 16 by nine. And if that doesn't come up for you in suggested, then you could just go into a search and go 16 colon nine and that, that will come up. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, you could go to custom size and uh, you could go to inches and you could do 16 inches by nine inches. You could do that as well. Uh, but that's how you do it in Canva. And then in Google Slides, I'm going to just slides.new. Slides.new is a super easy way to just start up a brand new slideshow in Google Slides if you don't know that keyboard shortcut, that little trick there. Uh, and then it's automatically in the 16 by nine format. And I'll show you if we go to page setup, you can see widescreen 16 by nine. It's already there as the default. So. Uh, please make sure that you do that 16 by 9 landscape orientation. Landscape is this. Portrait is tall. Landscape is wide. Make sure it's the wide landscape format. And then finally, try to use colors, images, and fonts that make your slide visually interesting and enjoyable to look at. Uh, so finally, I'm going to just share with you the resources that I've shared here. This is all in Google Classroom. First of all, this is how you sign up to join Canva for Education. And again, if you, you sign up now, you join now, you're going to have that Canva for Education. You get all the pro features for free at no cost to you. Uh, you'll get that until, for as long as you are a student in the Heart District, if you just click on that link and you follow the prompts and you sign up and you join Canva for Education. Uh, the next thing is, this is a quick tutorial on how to upload iPhone photos to Google Drive. So many of these images you can just get from Google or you can get uh, in Canva from the stock images. I'll show you really quickly how to do that. Um, Canva is a really powerful tool. Let me just move this down a little bit. And so let's say that you, one of the places that you love, part of your America is, uh, let's say that you visited, um, uh, what did I say? Zion National Park. Can I look for Zion National Park? And sure enough, there is a photo of Zion National Park, right? So Canva has, in elements, has such a great image library. It makes it so easy. Or let's say that one of the places that you love is Times Square in New York City. Well, if you look at photos, boom, there is a photo of, there is a, there it is, <laughs> a photo of Times Square in New York City or Times Square at night. So 
Uh, Canva just has a great image library. But let me go back here. One of the things that you're going to do is you need to include at least one and hopefully more personal photos. Now, you know with our cell phone rules that we are not allowing cell phones to be used in the classroom or cell phones to be used on campus. We're really trying to really trying to help students to uh, keep their phones put away and powered down. So I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to do that policy in class while you're working on this. What this means is that you may have to, outside of school hours, you may have to for that, just at least that one photo that includes you, you may have to upload your photos. And I, I include the instructions for iPhone since most students have iPhone. Android actually makes it even easier to upload to Google Drive. Uh, but the easiest way to do that is when you're at home, you upload your photos from your phone to Google Drive. And then that way, whatever photos that you need for this project that happen to be personal photos of you and your family, you can go ahead and you upload them at home. And then that way you can place them when you're working in class because you will have time in the class uh, over the couple of days before we actually do the presentation, right? So uh, so that is, those are those instructions right there. Uh, if you need to, if you need instructions on how to upload from the iPhone to Google Drive. Finally, here's my example of my presentation. And I will go ahead and I will open this in a new window so that I could do a proper presentation here. I will. Okay. And if I do this right, full screen, perfect. Okay, there we go. So hello, uh, I am now doing a, a practice presentation, an example presentation for you. My name is Mr. Ippolito, and that's one of the things I'm going to ask you to do when you present to the class is introduce yourself, your first and last name. Hi, my name is Mr. Ippolito, uh, and these images represent some of the things that I really enjoy. So uh, I will tell you that I love Marvel movies, and uh, my family and I, particularly my daughter and I, we love going to see Marvel movies in the theater. I would have to say my favorite character is Captain America, Steve Rogers, Captain America. That's why I have that shield there. I'm also very proud to be a teacher uh, and uh, to be a part of uh, an association of teachers, HDTA, the Heart District Teachers Association. Uh, and I'm also the vice president of HDTA, and I designed our new logo. And so I'm very proud of that. And so that's why I included this image there. I'm also very proud to be a teacher at Rio Norte Junior High School and very proud to have been here uh, when we first opened back in 2003. It is a great school. So those are three of my images. Uh, I included a bunch of small images of various musical artists because if you haven't heard from me by now, I love music. I love all genres of music. So you can see that I have artists on there from uh, from all time periods. I've got Elton John and Morrissey and Ella Fitzgerald and Adele. I've got Chance the Rapper and I've got Prince and Olivia Rodrigo and Shaggy and Whitney Houston and uh, Ed Sheeran and Camila Cabello and Biggie Small. Like I've got a lot of different musical interests. And so I love music. Uh, so that's why I decided to include like smaller, almost like thumbnail images of uh, various musical artists that I enjoy listening to. Finally, talking about, oh, and then, um, so uh, including personal photos of myself, right? This is myself and my wife. Uh, we got married almost 20 years ago. We got married in December of 2003, shortly after Rio Norte opened. Uh, and so we are very happily married to this day. And so there's me and my, my wife on our wedding day. And then there's me and uh, my daughter, and uh, we're hanging out at UCLA. You see the Bruin Bear statue in the background. And so uh, so sat so uh, including some personal photos of myself. And then finally, I said three images that represent my America. So these are the three that represent my America. I will move. I'll move my face over uh, Biggie's face there. Uh, so first of all, California. I love our state. I love living in California. I love the weather. I love access to the beaches. I love the mountains. I just love everything about California. And I love how diverse our state is. And how we have all different kinds of people. And for the most part, I think we usually get along. So I love California. Uh, so that's one of the things that I love. The other thing that I love is my family and I, part of my America is Hollywood. Um, we spend a lot of time going to theaters, both for live theater. We go to the Pantages Theater in Hollywood, uh, which is closer to Hollywood and Vine. We go to the Dolby Theater uh, for live theater as well, like musical theater. The Dolby Theater is where the Academy Awards are presented every year. So uh, my family and I, love, and I love going to live theater in Hollywood. We also love going to uh, movie theaters in Hollywood. So two of the theaters that we visit most often, the El Capitan Theater, we're actually going there soon to see the Goofy movie. It's being re-released in, in the El Capitan Theater, which is Disney's flagship theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And then finally, we are um, we love also going to the TCL Chinese Theater. That's where the handprints are, like the famous, you know, from Hollywood from almost 100 years ago. And the theater is almost 100 years old. Uh, I think it was built in the late 1920s. 
And so it's a huge old theater and it seats a thousand people, just like the El Capitan Theater, um, I think built just a couple years after the Chinese theater. And it's just a big, old, beautiful theater. Uh, and it just captures the golden age of Hollywood. So I love Hollywood. And so this is part of my America. California is part of my America. And then finally, uh, I chose an image of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. because I love United States history and government and politics. And um, I am friends with people on both sides of the political aisle. I like having good, uh, robust conversations with people about politics, respectful conversations with people about politics, both on both sides of the you know political spectrum. And so um, so that's why I have this representing my America as well, as well as I just love visiting Washington, D.C., because it's just a cool place to visit. OK, so that is my one slide presentation. I know I talked for longer than a minute. You don't need me to talk for nearly that long, but I just thought that I would share that. All right. And so that is the all about me one slide presentation. Let me get back here. You should have all the instructions you need right here in Google Classroom. My example slide right here, the Canva link. Um, and again, just as a reminder, you can work on uh, when you have independent work time in class, you can work on any part of the all about me one slide presentation. The only thing you cannot do in class is take out your phone to upload those images. But you're very welcome to do that at home uh, and upload them either to Google Drive. I think that's the easiest. Or you can email the photo, the image to yourself or the photos to yourself. Or um, if you download the Google Drive app, if you're doing Google Slides, the Google Slides app or the Canva app, you could also upload them when you're at home, upload them right to your presentation in the Canva app or in the Google Slides app. All right, that's it. I've spoken for long enough. Thank you so much for your patience. And I look forward to seeing you next time in Mr. Polito's history class. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.